Alhamdulillah that every Muharram and every Ashura has an opening. And when we have the love of Allah and Allah inspire within our hearts that my make your heart my home so that my Divinely Lights can reside within your heart that becomes a heart filled with the light of the Prophets, the Angels, the Saints, the Companions, the Ahlul Bayt and family of the Holy Prophet. It becomes the house in which all that God Almighty Allah loves is in that house. So our life is to study that house in the levels of the heart, the book from levels of the heart. Where's that book Shaykh, you give me one book. InshaAllah Bismillah. This is the book Levels of the Heart and it's about the house of Allah because it's not about your heart, it's not about cardiology. This is about Allah's house, Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah. This is about the house of Allah and the honour in which He gave our creation. He didn't say, the monkey's heart is my house, he didn't say, giraffe's heart is my house. He said, I have honoured your creation and the immensity of the honour is not something that we can understand nor will we ever understand what's, what Allah's grace and majesty has granted for us but that our creation can be the house of God and the kingdom of God can enter into the heart. All that God asks, Allah asks is, get everything else out, vacate them, throw it all out so that nothing resides within that heart except my Divinely Presence. And when my Divinely Presence comes, Allah then begins to clarify that, my love if I'm going to enter into your heart and you're going to make your heart for me, I'm with Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. And they are the best of those to keep company. So then Allah will teach us about the Prophet Siddiqeen, the truthful servants, truthful with their deeds and their actions. Shuhada, those whom have martyred, died in the way of Allah or mushahada that their character died and they witness and they death before their death, Allah as if they're walking the earth but they died. They are the paradise people on this earth. And salihin, righteous servants. This category is the reality of the Kaaba and the four corners of the Kaaba, the four valves of the heart. And Allah is then inspiring within our life that make your heart my home. So then our life is about how to clean the heart, purify the heart and take everything out of the heart other than Allah Muharram is the opening of every year's pilgrimage that we are in a perpetual path, a circle and every time we step and move and it opens, it has an ending. So every beginning because life is a circle, every beginning has an ending. So we begin in Muharram and we end on Zul Hajj but then it doesn't end because it's a continuous path of growth and spiritual realities. Soon as one ending the next one is opening, one step is out and you're already into the next journey and the next reality that Allah want to dress. So then every ashura for one whom is trying to purify themselves, perfect themselves is going to be based on these teachings of the lataif of the qalb. So the qalb is under the authority of Sayyidina Adam salam, and this has to do with the openings of knowledge. That when Allah gives for us the example of the greatness of this creation, 
alama isma kullaha that we have taught Sayyidina Adam salam everything, all knowledges, all realities because later we find out on this journey that soul that Allah gave is from the source of all treasures. So Allah wanted to be known by this creation and put the holiest of holy realities into that creation. And as a result all of creation would begin to understand who they are and where they come from. So that the lataif of the qalb and the opening means that on the ashura there must be an opening from the realities of Sayyidina Adam salam. What opened for the Prophet of Allah opens for all of creation because each Prophet is a representation of our eternal journey. And that's why Islam is the fulfillment of the covenant of Allah and that you can't go to Islam and then back into Christianity. You cannot go from Islam into Judaism as if you cut your finger and you have incompleted your reality and you've blocked yourself from Allah's Divinely Presence and that's why it's called mubtad, they've cut themselves from Allah Our life is about expanding our reality. Seek knowledge even if you have to go to Chin. Means the expansion of knowledge is the growth of the heart, is the love of the heart, expanding love and ishq for the heart. Not to take and cut one part of your heart out and say, now I'm, I'm this. So that's why you can never go from the highest down. But you can sure go from down up. So the lataif of the qalb, there has to be an ashura in which Allah grants what He granted to Sayyidina Adam That I cast you onto this earth, I granted you forgiveness. And we were all in that reality, we all came from paradise. Whatever happened in that first sin throw us all in a destiny to come to earth. So then Allah for every insan has a moment in which their tawbah must be accepted. They must be making, not that Allah has to accept it but we have to make a tawbah that Allah inshaAllah accept it. So we have to when we become in the way of knowing Allah said, you must like your forefather Sayyidina Adam salam, repent to me for the sins of your reality, sins of your being, sins of your father and your forefathers, make a life of istighfar and maghfirah. That's why we say every opening of Muharram is our time to repent that, Ya Rabbi maybe this the year that my repentance is sincere and that you accept it from me. Allah knows shaitan is attacking us, He knows this is not an easy football game where we just come get the ball and run to the end. He knows how much he's attacking. But our job is to ask for forgiveness. So Sayyidina Adam comes to our life and, and teaches us, ask and repent, repent for all that we did wrong so that Allah grant a forgiveness and that your, your journey begins. And then awliya come and begin to teach that what Sayyidina Adam salam knew from paradise that opened his ability to ask and make du'as that would be accepted. And said, Ya Hamidu bi haqq Muhammad, oh the most praiseworthy by the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because you don't know the reality but you're asking Allah I'm asking by the sake of that reality which I don't know it but you know it and by the reality grant to me Ya Rabbi Ba Hamid, Ya Hamid Ba Haqq Muhammad. Ya Aliyun, O oh Allah You are the Most High by the secret that You gave to Imam Ali salam, grant me my forgiveness. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allahu Al Khaliq Ba Haqq Fatima Zahra, O oh Allah You are the Creator. And the secret of creation that you gave to Prophet it's secret and that Prophet gave to Sayyidina Fatima to Zara 
Because every womb and everything that brings a creation has a secret within it, it has no power itself. Allah gave the secret for a spider, for a caterpillar, for, for everything in creation all the way to insan that their womb bring creation and that their womb bring these realities with the ilm, it's with a knowledge. And who's the owner of all knowledges is Sayyidina Muhammad and gave as an inheritance to his beloved daughter. So we say al-batul means the purity of the soul that's not comprehensible. We cannot comprehend how pure that soul is but that that soul carries the secret of that reality. So then we say, Ya Rahman bi haqq al-Imam al-Hasan, Ya Rabbi by the power of your sifat al-Rahman that governs the whole of the manifest creation, grant me your forgiveness. And Ya Raheem bi haqq al-Imam al-Husayn as salam Ya Rabbi grant me your forgiveness. By those words Allah told Sayyidina Adam salam, had you asked anything by using those words I would have forgiven you. Then Ayatul Kareem of what Sayyidina Adam began to recite and Allah granted forgiveness. But it had to be a key, it was by that key that the ayahs began to open and the du'as were beginning to be accepted. So I mean we have an ashura in which we're continuously that year asking for forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness and that ashura comes and Allah grant maghfirah, that like your forefather I will forgive you. I will forgive you and as a result of my forgiveness I will grant you knowledges. Allah's Forgiveness is two-sided, when Allah forgives you it's just not, okay I forgive you, leave, left you alone. When Allah if He grant forgiveness means now you have my attention and I'm going to grant you everything. Because Allah's forgiveness is that I'm going to grant you who you really are, who you should have been, the knowledges that I had bestowed upon your soul and your forefathers and forefathers before them. All those realities that are yours as an inheritance from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah's forgiveness is the door of opening. It's not just you tell a friend, I forgive you. Allah's forgiveness is that I'm going to now open for you because you've been forgiven. And that's why Sayyidina Adam then carries the maghfirah, the forgiveness and the maqam of knowledges. Alama Adam isma kullaha that I gave all these knowledges that the angels were astonished by these knowledges and that's why that lataif and that reality of Muharram is knowledge. Then when we study the lataif you go from this qalb of knowledge, the next lataif is the sir and it's red for struggling. So means that when Allah forgives us we're on a path of knowledge. So tariqah has to have the teachings and the knowledge. Shaykhs that don't teach they are starving their students as if a father who doesn't feed his children, there's not allowed. There's never been a shaykh in Naqshbandiya that doesn't teach. It's as if you go to someone's home and the father starving his children. He says, no, I want to discipline them and not feed my children, that's abuse, Allah doesn't allow abuse. So that you have to be fed by Divinely knowledges. That's the only najat, that's the only salvation, the knowledges is a power to the soul that sets us free. It takes us from the bad character to the Divinely character. So these are the realities that have to be endowed within the shaykh, that their heart has to be open and they can't be open and say, we don't talk knowledges or do this bad for you, it's, I'm not feeding you is what I'm saying. So they have to be fed. A shaykh who doesn't feed, 
his children are going somewhere else to eat. And you see now their turbans are in different associations just to get fed something which is, is horrible. If you have it you're obl obliged to give it because this is just the station of the qalb in which Allah said, I granted you forgiveness and I, gained, and I gave you these uloom and these knowledges and they are food for your reality and power for your soul. When Allah want to grant at the station of the sir their muharram and the reality of Sayyidina Nuh And Sayyidina Nuh, Noah was that he built a ship in the midst of drought and no water and abused by people. And this ship had 124,000 plaques which were ordained and Mawlana Shaykh has beautiful stories in Taskiyat in the Luhr of Lights that how even Sayyidina Nu got these pieces of wood and how he came across these giants and that they were eating and they couldn't get full from the food. And Allah said, go to them and teach them the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And then he went to the giants of that region and said that, please I need these trees for what God has ordered for me, I'm going to teach you something so that when you eat you'll be full. Because they were voracious appetite that they couldn't get full, it was like a torture for them. And he taught them, they said, teach us and we'll do whatever you want. They taught them the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem as a result when they would say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and eat they were full. They brought the trees, huge trees from the jungles, tore them down and brought them down for him. 124,000 and 124,000 each had to have the names of the Prophets upon them. And the headquarters of it, the steering council had to have Muhammad, Fatima, Ali, Hassan and Hussain. And that was the steering council and the guidance for that ship. And these are the realities from Sayyidina Nuh and this is the Muharram in which Allah says, then you have to be under the tajalli of Sayyidina Nuh to understand that if I've granted you forgiveness and granted you knowledges, you have to have a soul that's struggling. You have to now take your taskiyah and your inner journey to build your soul because Sayyidina Nuh's ship, Noah's ship was the symbolic symbol of our soul and the station of faith which is struggling and faith is never easy and never take the easy door. Everything in faith is, oh if I say this they're gonna get upset, if I do this they're gonna not like me, if I keep my sunnah they're all going to run away from me. Better they all run away from you than you leave your belief. Because Sayyidina Nu is inspiring and who's the Sahabi that inherits that reality? Sayyidina Umar, Farooq Al Haq, stand for truth, what are, we not on, are we not on truth? Why are we hiding? And Prophet so much loved the character said, if there was a Prophet after me it would have been Hazrat Umar because they're inheriting, the Sahabi are also inheriting from these levels of the realities of the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the Muhammadan heart. But Sayyidina Nu comes to us and says that, that one Muharram has to open for you that you struggled for your faith. And Allah is not going to open the lights of your faith with Safinatul Najad, the ship of safety that it took and, and departed and said, Ya Rabbi I'm about to now take a step into the oceans of tribulation and difficulty and they step into that difficulty and from every direction waves are coming and smashing as if to take their ship and smash it onto the shore. But Allah fear not I'm with you, we are with you, those whom you love we are with you. No matter how difficult this ocean becomes this ship knows how to get back to Allah and then our test is going to be our faith. It's working on the faith and working on the light 
and our practices have to be based on the practices of light. What's building your soul and your faith? It's your light practices, that which builds the love and the ishq and the good character within the heart. It has to traverse through oceans of difficulty until Allah on Ashura granted your ship to land. When the ship lands it went from the, the mulk of dunya and entered into Allah's Divinely Light Kingdom a Malakut, Ruhu Siba. The angel that comes and carries you from your dunya reality and plants your feet onto your akhirah reality. Means the opening of your soul, the opening of the lights of your soul that Allah granted your ashura to be the reality of your soul. That we accepted your struggle and this is a continuous struggle in life that we accepted your struggle. And as a result Allah is opening the lights of the soul for that ashura. Then when we go down to the sir and the workings of the world of light that Allah granted you to be from Malakut, now Sayyidina Musa salam and Sayyidina Ibrahim salam begin to inspire your next year's journey. It could be years in between each if the student is not struggling. But when they're struggling and they're understanding and say then a new is inspiring within their heart that your life is struggling, it's not supposed to be easy. Somebody you know doesn't like this, that's that well, well, you're not supposed to compromise your faith because of that. You have to make Allah happy and that becomes the difficulty in life is how to make Allah happy and continue with my path, balance everything, trying to make everybody to be content. But most content has to be Allah inshaAllah. Sir sir begin to open alam al-mithal in the world of light and Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa come and Sayyidina Musa begins to teach that the ocean of this difficulty parted and Allah granted me to land onto the Promised Land. And for us our Promised Land and the reality of who we are is inspired within our heart. That you promised Allah what you promised. You promised to be of support to Allah you promised to keep the Muhammadan way. You promised that from what Allah gave to you, you would be using in the way of Allah and that Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad wouldn't be second and third but they would be first because these are the oceans of iman and faith where Prophet described, you have to love me more than you love yourself. So then everything about Sayyidina Musa began to inspire that you left Pharaoh, you left this dunya. And you're running and struggling towards Allah and Allah parted everything and the angels came, picked you and took you to the shore of safety into the heavenly kingdom. Now you're a servant who roams the heavenly kingdom and as a result what? You're one whom talks to the Divinely Presence because this sifat of Sayyidina Musa salam is the realities of hearing. The one whom Allah talks to but we're not of that level that Allah talked to us but Allah allow your soul to talk to you. And that with your training and your tafakkur the inspirations of your soul begin to inspire you. So it means every ashura has an immense opening and as a result of this maqam because the testing doesn't mean it got, easy, it got uh, easier. Each of the Prophets are now showing you, no, 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 if you want to enter into this station of the fire, Divinely fire because Sayyidina Musa all of those simple 
quick analogies of Sayyidina Musa was what? The, the moving of the river, parting of the sea, means left all the ignorance, ran from Pharaoh, entered onto the Promised Land. Now you're working from paradise realities. As a result what Allah bring for you a burning bush now enter into Divine the Presence. And all the struggles and the difficulties of that reality of entering into that Divine the Presence not easy. So what Sayyidina Ibrahim then comes and inspires the two are at the same maqam, at the same lataif. Why the sir sir in the hands of Sayyidina Ibrahim too? Because his teaching that if Allah opened for you the world of light that know that every type of fire is coming your direction. Every type of fire is coming your direction. You didn't arrive where everyone says, Ahlan wa Sahlan, give you popcorn, give you candy, mashallah give you two kisses on the cheek that you came in. Sayyidina Ibrahim is, oh be careful because when Allah says, you're a heavenly soul, you're working, you're walking on a satanic kingdom of this dunya. So as a result Nimrod is chasing you, Nimrod is throwing every fire at you, every difficulty at you to stop you from walking this earth. Means you're going to be under intense training, intense difficulty. Every fire is coming your way, why are you complaining then? This difficult, that difficult, I feel like I'm on fire, I feel like everyone's attacking me. Oh of course everyone's attacking you. Allah told all His Pharaohs to throw fire at you. Everything, everything doesn't work your way. قُلِينَ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنَّسُوقِ وَمَا يَاهِيَ وَمَا مَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ you're going to test you with your lives, means you're not going to have everything that makes everything easy. We're going to test you with your family and your children but they won't believe in you, won't listen to you. We're going to test you with everything around you like a nimrod throwing fire at you. And either these fires will hit you and ignite you and you become narani and you leave that reality. Because if the, it should affect you, it then determines the course of your destiny. What was it Darth Vader said or Yoda said in one of them? They were quoting the same thing. It means if you take a path of darkness or you look towards the darkness, it then determines your entire direction. So when testing comes, this is where then it can make you and break you. If it breaks you means the testing came so much you became angered and the fire actually hit you and it wasn't, قُلْ يَا نَهَرُ كُنِي بَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا It was just, just your naru. you became narani and fiery as a result of all the difficulties that Allah is sending. that Allah promises, I'm not testing you more than you can handle. You just don't know what you can handle because the world make you like fufu. You give the cotton slipper and they bung, bung, bung. They look at the people that are dying and being ripped to pieces. Paradise not cheap. So Sayyidina Ibrahim is warning, oh, 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 this maqam, these realities that Allah granted on this Muharram to open for you means now every fire is coming in your direction, every test is coming in your direction. Allah want to see are you of a heavenly nature and have good character and that these fires don't ignite you but your entire practice, your wudu and everything about you, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنِي بَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا that whatever flame that's thrown Allah for that servant in training, they're trained on how to make it cool and peaceful. And they're entertained by these realities because they have the ability to take that fire and make it cool. Then Sayyidina Isa comes, My Father who is in heaven is the King and Sultan of all creation. 
But Sayyidina Isa, Ruhullah, Ruhul Qudus, this immense reality is now coming that there's going to be a Muharram in which Allah with all this fire and all these attacks and everything that coming to you, Allah said, Bahs enough, I'm going to raise you now to my presence. And there's going to be a rising where that testing came so much to their physicality. Testing came so much to their lives and everything around them, Allah granted, قُلْ يَا نَهَرُ كُونِي بَارْدًا وَسَلَامًا Go say to the fire, be cool and peaceful that Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa salam comes, I'm going to teach you how to rise now. That your body and your soul, they're not connected. And every time difficulty come for you, Allah will lift your soul into Divinely Presence in which you be quenched and drenched from Divine Rahmah and mercy. When they cry, they're crying from Allah's immense Rahmah and mercy, the immense light and blessings that Allah dresses upon the soul, blesses upon the soul as if took their soul and threw it into His oceans of mercy that can't be understood its immensity. And all you can do from your physicality is just cry and overwhelmed with crying because God's infinite rahmah and mercy that He makes the burning of the testing to be cool and peaceful with His Divine Grace. And enough healing that they can set out another day for again more difficulty and more sorrow and sadness. Then the highest from Sayyidina Isa is why? That he wants to teach the servant to rise, I'm going to take you to my special one, I'm going to take you to Sayyidina Muhammad And there's an ashura accepted by Prophet that your struggle is accepted, your way of understanding and annihilation is accepted. Join us for we are the Kawthari people. Our life is for Salli li Rabbika wanhar. We pray unto our Lord and we live a life of sacrifice. As a result their abode is surrounded by the Kawthar. They drink it, bathe in it, wash from it. Everything about their wujud is swimming in the oceans of Kawthar. And Prophet then begins to teach that why that level of the heart is the secret of annihilation and this is the secret of the black hole. They still don't know what comes from this black hole, that this black hole annihilates everything and creates stars because the star has no more mass, all of it has to be destroyed. The mass, the ego all has to be destroyed so that it become mahi, obliterated for Allah's sake. And as a result of being obliterated Allah turned the servant back on in the oceans of Baqa and they're lit, they're like suns. And then each year Allah expands the power of their sun from their sun to the super reds, to the white dwarfs, to the blue pulsar and then to Allah knows best what that reality and the light of these awliyaullah will become. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bahurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa Basir Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.